I will, I will keep my, I'll do my best to keep to time. But right. um, thank you so much for, for having Stride here today. Um, my name is Shireen. I'm program manager for Stride and, and also a, one of the lead facilitators for our programs. Um, I'd, I'd love to see a few hands go up when uh, you said, you know, who knows who's had Stride. And, and hopefully we've worked with um, many of you. I've been with Stride just over uh, two years um, in program manager role for about 10 months since we've had a bit of a, a uh, new business set up. We used to be in uh, White Lion and with White Lion, and we're now with an organization called Into Life, where we work with uh, Stride Education and Big Brothers Big Sisters Australia, who does um, mentoring. So um, I'll just really quickly, um, just before we continue, I just wanted to just do a quick uh, acknowledgement of the traditional owners of the land on which our head office is based, the Burung, Burung people of the Kulin Nation, we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend our respect to all elders and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across Australia. Um, I wanted to just in case those that haven't seen Stride before, I'll just wanted to play a quick video uh, that tells you a little bit about Stride and the programs that we focus on. I'll go into a little bit more detail afterwards and as well as like what Sally was saying, what programs we're running at this time. So hopefully this all works well for us. Stride is all about equipping young people to deal with the future. Young people are given a voice, they're given an opportunity to talk about things that they don't normally talk about, to have their voice heard, to be respected. We do that by giving them the skills, the tools, the language to use in their social and emotional well-being. And we do that through workshops. One of the biggest problems that we face right now is kids with anxiety and not feeling as confident, not feeling as bold. They're under enormous pressure socially, in school, online, in family circumstances. The three eyes for us are responsibility, resilience, and relationships. And if we can teach and train kids how to have strong of resilience and positive relationships and be able to take responsibility for themselves going forward, then we have done our work. I think for me, one of the most important things that I would love for students I work with to walk away with is that positive mindset, is that sense of self empowerment of I can. regulate my thoughts, I can regulate my emotions, I can choose who I want to be in this moment and have an idea of what's the best version of myself. I think this stuff will eventually happen in your life. It's good to know how to resolve issues. We get to learn it the fun way, not the boring way. In here we get to play games and that's really fun. When I get back to school, I'll aim to really bring back those skills into my schooling life. Not being afraid to talk to teachers as I know how, how to how to talk to young year levels as well. And I'm speaking, but also through the body language as well, which is really important skill that I didn't really think about before. I think it's a really good thing to learn because if you experience like a person problem or anything, you know how to deal with it and know how to approach people in a good way. Excuse me, Sharon, can you please turn that up? I'm sorry to, oh, it's finished, has it? Oh, okay. Was the sound a little bit uh, low? Oh, no, yeah. It's the sound a bit low for that. I'm gonna, okay. Okay, sorry about that. I'm going to go, I'll go through it. Um, I'm going to go through the um, program. Sorry, it's just. Uh, it's got a bit of a lag. That's okay. What's that? It, there was just a little bit of a lag. That's okay. Yes, sorry. If, you know, I tested it before and it all worked. <laughs> and okay. It was more that's on the line. But, um, but I'll, I'll put the link in for that and a few other links uh, in the chat when we're finished so, so you can watch it again. But I will go through it. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate everybody coming on the call today. This has been a really challenging time for everybody. 
um, and and particularly education sector. You know, we we've seen probably the biggest shake up to the education sector and and the ramifications and the um, consequences of this year will be very interesting to note for the next decade. Um, one of the most disconcerting thing that some, you know, really starting to make headlines and unfortunately only now making headlines is the, you know, what they're calling the silent pandemic. And that's the really severe mental health statistics that are starting to appear. We know that um, suicide rates have had an increase of 30%. There have been um, over a thousand suicides since the beginning of the year. Many of those have been young people, um, including cluster suicides. Um, besides the rates of anxiety and depression, we know the anxiety rates that were happening before COVID. There were some very disturbing statistics last year. Anxiety make, uh, rates amongst students, especially high school students, uh, disengagement statistics that were happening last year, and, and, and also some very difficult um, anxiety and mental health issues around, among teachers and well-being staff. So, you know, this has imp impacted us more. We all feeling it individually. And students that were struggling previously, everything's a lot more amplified. We've seen some students that have really thrived during this time and really enjoying the homeschool and the remote learning. And um, But some students that are really struggling. And, and so, you know, for all of us in, in this, it's just, it's ramped everything up and to, you know, work through our well-being concerns and the social and emotional learning now more than ever is, is really what we are focusing on. Um, we've got these four pillars that really Stride focuses on. Um, we look at the four pillars that our programs, the framework that our programs sit under, connection, community, communication and careers and transition. So really what we're looking at is helping students build soft skills. All our programs have a preventative nature. Uh, we're starting, most of our, our programs start in the primary school uh, around grade four, grade five with our friendship programs and our emotional management programs um, really focused around building those interpersonal skills and that social emotional learning, really strong identification and self-awareness of the self, how we relate to our peers, how we manage conflict and how we manage ourselves online. Our programs also focus on building community and you know, setting up leaders or what we're now calling change makers and helping students really find that clear self-expression and finding their voice, finding confidence by being able to learn how to assert themselves effectively. And our careers and transitions programs really focus on helping you know, the students, year nine, year 10 and 11, really helping them set themselves up in careers, find jobs, doing mock interviews and preparing them for that transition. Again, this year seems so much more difficult for everybody because of the uncertainty that we are facing. It's like a big open. So this is a list of um, some of our key programs, the Stride traditional programs. And I say traditional because probably the last 18 months we are focusing more on tailored programs because the landscape has changed so much, even before COVID, the, the complex landscape of social media and complex social issues um, have really changed the natures of our programs as well. Um, but these are, the, these are the key programs. Stride is actually uh, close to 25 years old. It started as the Peer Support Foundation. It started in New South Wales uh, by a school nurse who started a peer support program as a result of a year 11 student taking his own life. And throughout the years, it has evolved into a beautiful suite and quite comprehensive suite of programs that really focus on all social and emotional learning. Um, these are our uh, careers and transitions program. What we've done now with the careers program is we've 
um, been working on a program that we hope to implement next year that incorporates the uh, program, a new program called the Resilience Toolbox that adds the level of mindset and self-awareness that helps students build resilience tools in conjunction with their career and transition focus. So again, helping them identify their character strengths, helping them define a clear purpose, helping them goal set, and helping them build the confidence to really go out and find their jobs successfully. Because we find with our students that next to anxiety, confidence is most lacking in our students. And, and that's what we really aim to, to most importantly build in our students. Um, tailored programs, as I mentioned earlier, have become a very big part of what Stride does. So we, we do our tailored programs in different ways. Um, one is starting from scratch with a, with a school or a cohort that has very specific needs and we will build a program specifically for them. Or we are taking bits and pieces of the various programs and putting them into a comprehensive program. That's what we're doing um, most of the time. This year has been really interesting for Stride. I think as every company, and I'm gonna use that word that I swore I wouldn't, but <laughs> we've had to pivot like most companies. It seems like that's the, the word of the year is pivot. Um, we've had to, I suppose, find a new way of how we deliver, which has been really, really exciting for us to get out and expose ourselves even more. We've done programs all around Australia. We've had one of our facilitators do programs in, in India, uh, in China to 500 students all through Zoom. So we find it as we've adapted to this, this new landscape, we're actually being able to, to do more with the resources that we have. So it's, it's been a really creative and, uh, and, and interesting time for Stride. Um, today is the first day that, um, because they, we've got year 11 students back at school, one of the uh, schools has begun our peer support program again. So, you know, really exciting. We have students in the classroom and a facilitator on screen. You know, it kind of just seems very futuristic and crazy, um, but it was really exciting to see that uh, this morning everything set up and, and that we can continue to do the work that's needed. Um, we've been doing a program with Carajong, uh, Carajong Primary School in Stonington Council, uh, of a smooth transition program for their students helping. We did it last year with them, their grade six, helping them transition to grade seven. And um, starting next week, we're taking that program online. So we're trying to be as adaptive and creative with our programs to really ensure that we're still engaging and, and entertaining our students and keeping them that whole interactivity still going with our programs. And, and most importantly, having them relevant to the students and, and still fun. So, you know, we've sent out resource packs and things that they're building through the process and still, you know, keeping it quite hands on. Um, another program that we've been running throughout the year is our Adapt and Grow. And this program was originally um, started with uh, Fintona Secondary School that um, really needed some help engaging their students or re-engaging their students after the initial lockdown. And this focus, this, this program has really been focused specifically on how we can manage ourselves through this COVID period. And make sure that we are adapting and growing from this time because they had students that were just checking out that were saying 2020 is just a write off. I'm not interested anymore and just completely disengaging. So this is really a program focusing on helping with mindset and some tools to really adapt to this period and make sure that you grow through it as well, including in that is some self care tips for the students um, to grow through. So these are some of the tips that we've included in the Adapt and Grow program. Um, another thing that I, I wanted to bring in today is we have done a partnership with the Six Star Wellbeing Survey with the founder of Six, well, Six Star Wellbeing Survey. 
and uh, a company called ACR, which most of the schools would be familiar with. And because we, because we're all sitting in a space of uncertainty of where well-being is at with our staff and our students, we really wanted to take a deeper measured approach to well-being and really be able to check in with our students. And this is a program that we're going to start to build into the stride framework. Well, we're starting now, but ideally, or most likely I should say, it will roll off into 2021. Um, but this is the process of how we're working where the, the schools can do the six star well-being survey, which looks at those six key components of well-being, also give individual statistics, which is really fantastic. And so what we can do is we can work with the school to analyze that data and then design programs specific for that, um, those, that, that cohort. So it's a data-driven program and lets us really create a program that focuses on the efficacy and growth of those particular issues. Um, so that's a really exciting level that Stride will be going through to really, like I said, have that measured approach to well-being and build in that evaluation framework to all of our programs. Um, we have a few schools lined up, one of them in South Australia, which the whole program next year will be delivered online. Um, but this will be incorporated. It's, it's a 12 month program working with years four to seven, working with the well-being survey and then rolling out programs to answer the needs of the specific survey uh, data that comes up. So that's a really exciting um, evaluation process that we look forward to having in the stride uh, framework because it just takes our evaluation process to another level and as we all know that data is 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 key right now for for making sure that we are having programs that are relevant and you know that students are really growing from and engaging in so that's a really exciting program that um that we're going to be adding to um to our suite um so before i wrap up today i thought that um we just would offer some strategies to support mental health which kind of, you know, where the foundation of most of our programs really sit in. Um, you know, what we find with, with all our students, um, and especially with students with special needs, is that key, that the, the core of well being is having sound social skills and a sense of belonging that that is really at the core of a lot of the anxiety and angst that they feel, especially in transition. Um, I think that this platform, this COVID platform, the hardest aspect of it is the uncertainty. And so helping students to maintain social connections, maintain that self-care, and how to start to be uncomfortable in the discomfort is really the kind of resilience that we're focusing on. How do we be comfortable with uncertainty and have the confidence to handle situations in the moment? Um, so, you know, focusing on programs that help students with their mindset and emotional regulation, um, survey well being, what I was speaking about earlier you know, really building in an evaluation process and checking in with our students. I think we all have a much higher duty of care at this time. I think well-being was always an essential aspect in schools, now more than ever, you know, as um, the professor from Origin spoke about the silent pandemic. Now more than ever, we have to check in, we have to observe those mental health cues of students who are withdrawn, who are aggressive, who are, you know, seeing any behavioral, you know, lashing out or even, you know, just removing themselves. Um, you know, even what we've done with another school at this time is put a self-care buddy program in place where students have an accountability partner to check in on their self-care. 
Um, and I think it's a great thing. We've done it with students and we've also done it with teachers. For a teacher to have a self-care buddy to really ensure that at least 15 minutes of self-care is being implemented every single day and really help us manage our stress over this time. Implementing a well-being culture and a well-being focus, utilizing that language, um, really prioritizing and, um, and showing basic wellness foundations. And the difference between wellness and well-being there is, you know, wellness really focusing on the foundations of sleep, of nutrition, keeping them moving, exercise as much as they are capable. Um, so having that wellness and well-being focus as well, encouraging the inclusiveness and sense of belonging along the groups. Um, there's been a lot of writing at the moment about bringing humor into the classroom, which is a, a fantastic focus, especially during the heaviness of all of this, is finding some way to bring humor and lightness in is a really good strategy to build that sense of belonging as well as lifting the mood along amongst the classroom as well. Obviously, strength-based focus, really focusing on what they can do and their strengths at the moment, promoting mindfulness practice. Um, Sally, I know you're going to bring in some black dog um, apps that are avail available that will talk about mindfulness. Um, there's a lot of apps. Uh, one of them in particular is uh, Insight Timer, has a, a wide, very broad scope of um, meditations and mindfulness activities that people of all ages can do, even young kids. Support a self-care plan. I think that would be essential, um, especially for our year 11 and year 12 students. Um, help with organizational skills and researching new institutions. So for those that are really focusing on their TAFE and um, uni moving on and being in that transition, really helping them research and just feel a bit prepared and take away some of that uncertainty. We find that uh, in our Carajong program, um, we've created a bit of a transition buddy system as well with students from the school that have gone over to your seven that can come back and say, actually, it wasn't that bad because as we know that anticipatory thinking is often worse than the actual reality of it. So having students that come back and speak about um, their, you know, university experience or TAFE experience, just kind of taking away that cloud of uncertainty can really be, be helpful as well. And, and working really closely now with support services and parents um, as well. Uh, so this is our little uh, tagline that we're really promoting. Uh, we are creating a foundation and a cause that we will launch next year known as In My Stride, which is going to provide students um, with some real resilience tools and skills for everyday program and really take away the stigma of mental health that sits with it. Um, and with all our programs, with our, for our students and parents and teachers, we like to leave everybody with the message to most importantly, take life in our stride, especially now, day by day, moment by moment, to learn the skills, how to break things down so we take away overwhelm and anxiety and depression and take life in our stride. So, Thank you so much for, for having Stride here today. Um, hope I haven't gone through that too quickly, but um, would love to hear if there's any questions or if anybody would like to um, make any commentary on anything. I may just leave the, uh, the PowerPoint on for now. I think you're on mute, Sally. I'll just take. Oh, that'd help. Sorry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now, did, sorry. Thank you so much for that. I'm sorry about that. Um, thank you very much. Did anybody have any initial thoughts around the around um, some of the programs that are being offered through Stride? 
Has anyone actually delivered something like this in their schools? Um, I, I also wanted to um, also make note that uh, we are still carrying on with all our teacher professional development days. Um, we have some new programs that we've been working on. Uh, one in particular called our new Supportive Friends program that we are going to be doing a pilot in Ballarat that will blend Supportive Friends, our Empower Girls program, um, and peer support in a program that helps students learn works with the whole year level to teach blanket uh, social skills and then we'll work with a uh, self-assigned cohort of friendship mentors that will take a role of being a friendship mentor in a school as well. So that's really exciting. Um, we also have a mindfulness event coming up next week which I'll put the link for in the chat um, that um, that everybody, it's a free event. It's on the Wednesday, the 4th of August, and we're going to do um, an hour of mindfulness. So we'll have a bit of a, a mindfulness talk and then actually do a bit of a half hour relaxation exercise. So it's just a little gift that we're giving to all our teachers and, and supporters just to help out with a little bit of mindfulness um, during this time. Um, we also have a well being teacher's toolbox that we created and this is a free online program uh, and I'll put that, I'll put it into uh, the chat, um, the link for that, I'll actually put that there and um, it's, um, sorry, I've just seen the questions now, I'll come to those in a second. Um, uh, the, the link to that, you can just sign up and it's an eight module program that you get a module every week. So every week you'll be sent a module and it's free it looks at the eight habits of well-being and resilience for teachers. Um, so that's been something fun that we've been working on um, over this time. Um, I'll just see any of the other questions. Um, so how do schools go about accessing Stride to run programs? Um, Sally, if you want to um, include our details, um, our, the website is stride.org.au, um, so if you can, um, I'll just put that in the, in the um, chat box as well, and um, you can send us an inquiry there, we have an inquiry form, um, which has, you can have it to a specific program, or if you'd like to speak to myself or our business development manager, normally we will come in and just really have a chat about what cohort you are, you know, what what's really needed right now. And if it is a tailored program, you know, we just go into a little bit of a co-design program process with the school um, as well. So that, you know, we're getting student voice and teachers involvement, principals well-being um, all together, which is really great. And we can also send you on our website, you can also find details for the six star well-being survey. Um, and again, we can come and meet with you for that um, discover, design, deliver process um, with our, our business manager we, we're, um, and, and the partnership. So really we're focusing, our 2021 plan is really about focusing on building relationships with schools that we can work over longer period, like the couple schools, the one in South Australia, that we're running this 12 month program and really checking using the well-being survey as a real you know check-in tool along the way so you know we're really finding that instead of um, running the daily program so there'll always be a need for those daily programs but rather than having that one-off approach we're really trying to do longer programs that focus more on transformation so you know, the beauty with Zoom has allowed us to do, say, a 45 minute session, but over six weeks instead of a one day program. And so students have more bite sized chunks that they can just simmer with every week rather than a whole day where they take in too much information or they check out halfway. So, you know, and, and, and again, especially for students with special needs, we find that this has just been really successful of just to shorter programs over that longer period of time. Um, but yeah, the best, probably the best access is through, through our, um, through our, 
our, our website or um, my email, which I will put into the chat after this as well. Are there so any other? Sorry, did Sally. Anyone, sorry, did anyone have any questions? Any comments? I'll put my um, email there as well. Oh, fantastic. I actually did have, um, I did have one question before you were talking about the transition from primary to secondary and the programs that you do there. What are the similarities between those transition programs and programs that you may be offered to students graduating this year? Is there certain things that we need to be thinking about in terms of their what they're experiencing and how they can be supported, um, yeah. particularly in light that some students may may actually be experiencing a, a, a more more serious condition. Um, Absolutely. That they need help with. And it's interesting because you'll find that the grade six students and the grade twelve students are still, you know, talking about um, the same thing. And I mean, Karajong is 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 a great example because in most people that know the Karajong school program, in most of these kids have special needs um, outside of the mainstream school. We had an amazing program with their students last year where really deep connections were made with the, with the, pros, the, the, um, the cohort um, and, and this year as well. Um, and the similarities is, is really around that piece of uncertainty. So, you know, students with, with, with special needs, I think all students, most of us, thrive in routine and thrive in certainty. And so, you know, the, the, the concerns that we hear that are similar are, number one, leaving the friendships that they have and having to build new friendships. And, you know, how, how are they going to form those again? Um, so helping them remember how they did it, you know, in primary school and how they managed and building those skills of knowing how to have those conversations and icebreakers and reaching out to people. And, you know, that's where the transition buddy can be really helpful. Um, so for example, if, you know, somebody, if they're going to Holmes Glen Tafe, having somebody come in and talk about what did that first day of school look like? Or what did that first day of Tafe or uni look like? Um, how did you get there? So, you know, helping them know train scheduling and Mikey's and, you know, what are they going to wear and just really giving them and equipping them with as much knowledge of what it's actually going to look like yeah. um, and, 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 you know, helping them build, build those skills. I think that whole social piece is really going to be um, a challenging one this year because, we're in a world at the moment of social isolation. And so helping them build the online skills of connecting will be really, really um, important as well. But, you know, as much, I think taking away that cloud of uncertainty um, and painting that clear picture, it, then it doesn't sound so great. And, and you know, even, um, you know, we play a game with the students, like a problem solving game, like a, a you know, just a problem solving bingo, for example. Um, where, you know, they really just give us all their concerns of, you know, what happens if I, if the workload's too big, what happens if it's too much work and I can't cope, what happens if I miss the train and, 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 and I, and I get there late, you know, and just taking them through the scenarios of, okay, well, let's just play this out. Let's just see what, what happens. And then, and then they can see that, again, it's that anticipatory thinking that, okay, it's actually not that bad. And, and so- It leads a lot of stress, helping, doesn't it? Yeah, just helping them be, you know, comfortable in the discomfort, you know, like just, okay, it's just like, <laughs> uncomfortable yes. for a little while. Let's just sit through, you know, like the, the caterpillar sitting in the goo kind of thing. Great. Well, well, thank you so much for your presentation. It's given me a lot of food, food for thought. Did, did anybody else have any other questions? Not at this time. I'd be really interested in um, in speaking with you at some stage about um, how students in at this time can um, disclose disability and talk about their support needs when they when they're starting to look at tertiary education. Um, one of the things that we that keeps coming up is that a lot of students are not funded or they don't really they're not really very aware um, of, of what their disability is and how it impacts on them. So. We've been actually looking at some of those connections around 
how young people are getting the message about when to ask for support and what, when, when, when is it that you actually need to be asking for it and that might need additional help beyond what the school's able to offer or the institute's able to offer um, and being confident around um, understanding their strengths and their learning styles as well, um, especially when you're attending tertiary education, um, uh, you know, having that, having a really good grasp of your own study skills and, and how, how, how you're going to get through that time is really important, I think, before you start embarking on, uh, on, on your graduation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that um, I, I love the, the, the strengths-based approach, um, you know, really, and, and that's a, it's a great one for building confidence. And I, I think that the other piece as well that's really important for, for a lot of the students is to, to um, especially the students with greater special needs of, and disabilities of, you know, knowing access and accessibility and, and understanding the campus, doing a virtual tour of the campus as well. Um, really, really helpful. Mm, absolutely, it's a, the familiarity of the of the campus site and know, knowing who you need to speak to. But um, I'm sort of more thinking in terms of if you're looking at mental health issues and and anxiety and and those sorts of things. Like it's it's something that a lot of people are experiencing. It's something that everybody experiences at some stage in their life. But what we find is that the the mental health rates in um, tertiary education um, go up exponentially um, once somebody enters the, that that sector um, yeah. of their education. So we you know, the, the more that students are prepared and that they don't be too hard on themselves about what the future offers and that it doesn't all have to happen straight away, um, I think, yeah, the better. But uh, we have, I have had a few requests from schools around um, how to support students in those conversations. So it would be great to see something like that being offered. Um, yeah, absolutely. Young people, particularly in mainstream schools that haven't had um, that same influence and support that they would have got um, in other environments or will get in tertiary education. Absolutely. And, you know, um, that's where like the communication piece is so, so important um, because we find, you know, not only with students of, with disability, but we are hearing from our, the corporates that we work with that, you know, the students are finishing tertiary education without any soft skills that they're not equipped for the workplace. Absolutely. And you look at even the, you know, the, the teaching platform education, a lot of the young uh, graduates are leaving the industry within five years. We're finding 40% of young graduates because they're not equipped with the resilience and the um, soft skills to actually manage day by day. And so, you know, that's where the STRIDE programs are really focused around those preventative social emotional learning strategies that, you know, enable students to have the communication skills to manage their mindset, to manage their self-care, to regulate their emotions. So it's, it's, it, they're enabled to manage uncertainty and any challenges that come up in that yeah, moment. Absolutely. 